Today's training will be on how to use a GPS in the field. Let's look at the typical workflow. Step 1. Set up your base and your rover. Step 2. Wait for the fixed solution that you will receive on your controller or device. We don't connect to the base like we always did using an old GPS system. With today's new technology and the way we at Som Surveys set up your GPS is we let your GPS accumulate an automatic 2 minutes yoke coordinate. After that, it will automatically send the corrections to your rover. When you've got the corrections on your rover, you will wait until you get a fixed solution before you start to work. It's as simple as that. No more switching between connections or struggling to connect to the base and then back to the rover. It's simple, straightforward. Set up your base, let it accumulate a year coordinate for two minutes where after it will send the corrections to your rover until you receive a fix. Great, so we've set up our base and rover and we've got a fixed result. What you can also do is, while you're waiting to get your fixed result, you can go into your projects and get your project started. So let's go to projects and then to new, create your project name, put in an author, select your relevant coordinate system. This is very important. Each area across the world has got a certain coordinate system. If you're just working on a normal WGS84 system, you can do that. Or if you've got a specific coordinate system that is relevant to your specific location, please use that coordinate system. In South Africa, for example, we've got Hartibesuk 94 and where our current location is WG29. So we're going to go ahead and select that coordinate system. Great. So we've selected the coordinate system. Next thing we need to do is we have to import the control or we can type in the control points manually. Luckily in our case, we've already got the control available. So I'll go ahead and import the control. I click on import. I navigate to the correct folder. I click on the control file. .csv, that was how we saved it. Your file might be on a text file, if that is what you prefer. We prefer a .csv file. Great, and I will go to import. Great, my points have been successfully imported. So you've imported your control points or you have typed them in manually. The next very important step to do is to go stake out your first control point and look for that specific control point. So in our case, we're gonna stake out a point called benchmark one. It might be your control point, um, or it might even be a trick point that you need to go visit on top of a mountain. Whatever your control point's name is, if it's a local site, you're lucky, lucky enough and you don't need to establish or go to existing control. But in most cases, to be as accurate as possible, we as surveyors link to existing control always. So let's go and stake out the first control point. When we go to point stakeout, I go add, I go manually select and I click on OK. I want to stake out benchmark 1, which is my, con my control point 1. I'll click on OK and I can see that I'm about 40 meters east and 25 meters south from it. So I'll go ahead and try and navigate to that point. Great, so we found our first control point. We know that this is our control point. Even though we're 2.6 meters off from the original position, we know that it's the point because it's got a tag which is called BM1 and also we can verify due to the thickness of the peg which is a 12 millimeter. So we're going to assume that this is the first control point and we're going to go ahead and then just measure this point and give it a suffix of GNSS to make sure that when we do our control site calibration we know that we have selected the correct point. I'm going to go ahead and bubble the rod extremely good. The next thing we're going to do is a site calibration after we have surveyed in our control point. 
So we'll go to site calibration or transformation, whatever it's called in the application that you are using. We'll go add. Under the GNSS point, we'll make sure that we select the correct measured point. And under the known point, we make sure to, se to select the correct control point. On our method of calibration, for this example, heights are also important to us. So we'll go ahead and do a site calibration using horizontal and vertical. So as we go through the site calibration, we can see the type of shift that has been that has taken place. So to verify that this has been done correctly, we will now stake out the original control point. In this case, it's, it is BM1. Your software will show you that you are on the correct position and you can now go to your next control point to verify that your system and that the control point that you have found for your site is correct. Great, so what we want to do now is to try and stake out the control point to verify that our site calibration has been successful. We have found the point as it is written benchmark 2 or BM2 on the tag and we can see that it's correlating to the point that we are staking out. Great, so we can see that we are within 20 moles so we can just go ahead and measure the point and continue with the work. So we did our site calibration, we checked it on a second benchmark we saw that we were within 20 millimeters and that was sufficient for the type of work that we'll be doing today. We'll now, now go ahead and make sure to do whatever is necessary on this specific site. For what we are going to do, we're going to place some ground control points for a drone survey as well as measure some check shots with the GPS and there's about two or three points that we'll be staking out. So let's get going with the point survey. Great. So we've started with our point survey and we've encountered a top bank position. It's very important when measuring contours to always measure your top banks and your bottom banks and if it's possible if it's a long slope also maybe a spot shot in between the top and the bottom bank. The reason for that is you want as true as possible contours to represent in your CAD model. So to do that we need to measure all our, all our highs and all our lows on site and to try and create a physical flow of the earth on a computer screen or in your contours. So I'll go ahead and measure the top bank. This is a small embankment, so I'll go ahead and measure the bottom bank. Great, so we finished with our survey. We did a topo survey of this entire area and we managed to stake out some GCP points and verify the control. When we end our survey, very important to go back to your first original site calibration point and measure that point to verify that there was no shift in data. So when you get back to office that everything is 100% and you can rely on your data and you know that everything is correct. Let's go and verify that our control is still correct. Great, so we know where the benchmark is. Let's put it on the benchmark and see what results we get. Great, so we verified that our control is still correct and we now know that we can trust our own data. Next up, we can go back to office, create a report, whether it was a stakeout report, if you've done staking out of points, whether it is the, uh, creating a contour or a site map of your area, if you did a DTM contour survey or of just a normal DTM, we can now go back to office and create a report for our stakeout if you did a stakeout on your own site or we can create a contour map or a DXF or a site plan if you did a survey of your site area. We now know that our control is correct and we can trust our data. Let's go to office.